the body sorted. And for that, I need a plan, man. I'm in the heart of the Ford Design Center for Europe. I've almost had to sign my life away to get in here. It's top secret. From here, all the designs are conceived. It's big business and it's big bucks. My contact is Matt Jones. He might look a bit art school, but I'm told he's a whiz on the computers. So, Matt, where did you start designing our bodywork? Well, we had these photos and not a lot of information on them. Took the measurements off the chassis and came up with this here. If you look at it from the front, you can see how we've put in the, the track dimensions and the chassis dimensions and the radiator. And all the bodywork is made from the photos, which is sort of guesswork, really. Oops, it's come out like that. And if we give it some colour, Lovely. It starts to look a little bit more like a, a yeah. car. Yeah. And how confident are you you've got something our body worker can work with? Um, reasonable, because luckily with this system we can, if we see a side view here, we can give him a drawing of that and he'll be able to measure off the drawing, scale drawing, exactly what he needs to make the body. All right, here we are. With that done, it was time to get the plans off to our coach there builder. Good luck. It's been great doing business with you. OK, <laughs> yes. cheers. While Suggs was mucking around with supercomputers, I was heading north with my wobbly wheel to probably the only firm in the country who'd be able to fix it, Specialised Automobile Services. These guys are pretty much the best in the business. There's not a car worth owning that they've not made a wheel for. We've got Steve Hopkins, the big cheese himself, to straighten ours. Right then, Steve, are we going to see exactly how wobbly this is? Yeah, well, let's is? get it on the jig and see what happens. I'll hold it in position if you want to put the bolts on. This is pretty much the last chance saloon. If it doesn't work, there's no way we can make a press to stamp out a new one. We have to make it work. It looks fairly bad. It's not even sitting on the jig properly. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's just see exactly how far this is out. Well, it's quite wobbly on the car. Wow, look at that. That's terrible. How fast were you going with that? I got it up to 50 miles an hour. 50? And the guy in towards the track kept going, slow down, I'm not slow surprised. Down. I'm not surprised. That is absolutely horrendous. Yeah, what's actually <laughs> caused it to buckle like that? Well, looking at it, you've got a, a weld here. That's not the original manufacturer, is it? No, 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 no. I think sometime in its life it's had a fatigue crack. Somebody's tried to weld it, do a repair weld. And as soon as you put any heat on a disc, and it's going to buckle exactly like that. Oh. So can we repair this? It's a difficult one. It's a very difficult one. I think the only way we're going to be able to do it is to cut round there, make a new centre, and hopefully, when we weld it back up again, <laughs> we don't have the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's a buckle. What do you think the chance of success is? Well, putting any heat on a disc wheel like this always causes problems, so slim to none, but we shall give it a try. Now, being organised, I sent the measurements on ahead and they've actually made up the central hub. Now, all we have to do, and I say all, is prepare the wheel and weld this in position. It probably won't work, but we don't really have a choice. We have to give it a go. The idea is to use the new hub as a flat surface on which to bolt our bent wheel. By tightening the nuts bit by bit, we should gently coax it back into shape. OK, let's get going. Is it time for the gas lights? Yes. Hey. <laughs> this might seem crazy, but the first thing Steve must do is butcher our beloved wheel, cutting a hole for the new hub. Right, Claire, get a big hammer, we can knock it down now. There we go. Wind the monks up. With the hub fitted, it needs to go back on the jig, and bit by bit, just a few thou at a time, Steve tightens the bolts, bringing the wheel back into alignment. Fighting. Ooh. Getting better all the time. Ooh. It's then we can begin to weld it all back up again. Now comes the hard bit. As soon as we go anywhere near the thin bits of metal with a welding torch, they're going to heat up, expand and buckle in all sorts of interesting ways. If we're not careful, we're going to end up creating a wheel worse than the original one we had. The alternative is to spend £30,000 on a brand new one. And we haven't got that money. This is the moment of truth. 
If we're going to fulfill our promise to Neil and get the car screaming at Brooklands once more, then this has got to work. There you go, Claire. What do you think of that? Oh, that's not bad at all, is it? Considering how it was before. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of distortion there, but it's not too bad. I think we can live with that. Thanks very much. It's fantastic. You're going to do 150 mile an hour on that now. Yep, don't tempt me. I'm going to get that back to the workshop and straight on the car. The only thing we need now is a set of tyres. Rubber might start growing on trees, but before it's a tyre, the black stuff's going to have to spend some time with Dunlop, being pulled, stretched and rolled into shape, just as it was 90 years ago. The real skill begins when each of the layers is glued into place by hand and the edge is built up. This rubber band is then placed inside a vacuum mould to give it its basic shape. The final part of the process is sticking it in an oven, squirting in water and baking the lot at Gas Mark 4. The result?